I'm grateful that you are joining us for this celebration of the Sunday Eucharist for the fourth Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we might more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sin. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, to and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land had retrieved its lost Sabbath, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writings. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. For there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord 
<clears throat> in a foreign land. If I forget you, Jerusalem, may, right, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raises us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord to you, Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world. But people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This may sound very familiar to you, Christmas is over. All of the leftovers are pretty much done. Feeling perhaps a little bloated or guilty at how much we indulged in the wonderful rich foods of Christmas. So we prime ourselves for a New Year's resolution, for committing to improving ourselves, to eating better, exercising, maybe praying more, so that the busyness of life doesn't overwhelm us. Then we get to February. It's Mardi Gras season. By now we've probably cut so many corners already, and king cake is just so wonderful that it all falls apart. Another year of broken resolutions. But then Lent arrives and we are ready to try again. So we give up dessert or chocolate or eating in between meals, and we commit again to praying more. 
And here we are, my brothers and sisters, this fourth Sunday of Lent, halfway through Lent now. Maybe we're still going strong. Maybe we've cut some corners. Or maybe we've already given up this year. And year after year, this cycle repeats itself of trying and failing. Our sins, our faults, and our bad habits. We try year after year to commit to overcoming them. And year after year, we seem to fall short. We are at now this midpoint in Lent. Now, at this moment, the temptations to give up on Lent start creeping in and they start getting louder and louder. Hopefully we realize that now is the make or break moment. My dear friends, we are past the season of starting something new because what is placed before us is the season of continuing continuing even if thus far we have not been faithful. This far into Lent, we now have to continue. This is the season where our relationship with God will either thrive or fade away. Every single one of us comes to this time in the season of Lent having to make a choice, a choice to continue or not. In any relationship, once the initial flare, so to speak, goes away, we make the choice to continue, to doing the real work of deepening the relationship. The exact same thing is true of our relationship with the living God. We have to choose to continue to remain in that relationship, which means we have to choose to continue our life of prayer, one of the hallmarks of the season of Lent, which isn't an easy thing to do. Recognizing the challenge that prayer is, some call it the battle of prayer. We are here today because we either have or we want a deeper, more personal relationship with God. We can't ever forget that. We started it. Now we are in the season of continuing it, of entering into this battle that is prayer. So what happens when prayer does become a battle, when it isn't easy? when I'm tempted to quit or to give up, when it becomes something I have to intentionally choose to continue. The Catechism of the Catholic Church speaks of prayer as a grace, but also as something we have to work at. The Catechism states, and I quote, prayer is a gift of grace and a determined response on our part. It always presupposes effort. Prayer is a battle against ourselves and against the tempter who does all he can to turn us away from prayer, away from union with God. End quote of number 2725 of the Catechism. So prayer, the Catechism says, presupposes our effort to work with God's grace. We hear experiences of people going to pray and they say that the hours feel like minutes for them. But so often when we try that, the minutes feel like hours for us. Perhaps at the beginning of this Lenten season, we said we will pray and prayer is just letting God love me. But so often it doesn't feel like that, does it? Prayer is a battle. It's not me doing something wrong if I experience this. Prayer presupposes effort, 
the decision to continue in spite of the difficulty. God desires spiritual maturity for each one of us. God wants us to grow to the full experience of his great longing for us. And that maturity always passes through the desert, the desert of dryness and difficulties. If the last four weeks of Lent have been hard and difficult for you, recognize that it's necessary for us to become spiritually mature in our faith. It's easy to think that we are doing something wrong. It's easy to fall into the temptation that we're not good at this. But every single person, even Mother Teresa, experiences dryness in prayer. We have to so that we can become mature Christians. So if it's the case, what do I do with this dryness? What do I do when it's hard to pray, when I don't want to do it? Ask yourself this question. Have I given my heart to something other than God? Have I allowed sin to creep into my life? Because it's possible for me to blind myself, to hold myself back from a relationship with God. But it's not so much my sin that does this as my refusal to acknowledge my sin. So we ask ourselves when prayer is dry, have I given myself over to something else? Do I acknowledge my sin? The second thing we do when we experience dryness in prayer is that we must, we must remember what God is doing. Many times God leads us to the desert, that powerful image, to speak more deeply to our hearts. God tells the prophet Hosea these wonderful words in the Old Testament. I will allure her. I will lead her into the desert and speak to her heart. God leads us into the dryness of the desert, into the dryness of prayer, to make us realize the things that we are drawn to don't actually satisfy us. Only God truly satisfies for us to love God for himself and not just for his gifts to us, sometimes he has to take the gifts away so that our love may be purified. The decision to choose God even when it's hard is how we enter into the battle that is prayer, into the dryness of the experience. And if we do so, it will transform our hearts. God leads us into the desert, into the dryness, to both speak to our hearts and to tend to our hearts, to give us his heart. We see both of these points play out in our first reading. The Israelites had forgotten who they were, forgotten their relationship with God, forgotten that God, God desired to have a relationship with them. They turned to idols, to sins. They gave their hearts over to other things. And God led them into the desert of an exile, but not simply to punish them. That would be incorrect. He desired to call them back to himself. Going into exile stripped away everything so that the Israelites could remember who they were and what they were called to. Difficulties in prayer can discourage us greatly. It's easy to feel like there's no point in continuing because 
I can't focus. I'm doing it wrong. I'm failing. But God wants our hearts more than God wants our successes or our achievements. God desires our hearts more than he desires success or achievement. It's precisely through our discouragement with our own wounds and struggles that God can speak to us. Because God wants our hearts as they are infinitely more than he wants our healing or fixing. God desires our hearts more than anything else. Our gospel reading today reminded us that because the good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we might not die but have life in him. St. Paul says in our second reading today, God did this for us, even though we were stuck in our sins. God doesn't just want to come and fix us, so to speak. God wants us, each and every one of us, period. So my dear friends, the encouragement now is for us to continue to let God lead us into the desert. It's the only way to encounter the fullness of what God desires to give to each one of us, which is his own love and his own heart. In the desert, in the battle of prayer, in the dryness, May God strip away everything from our lives that prevents us from receiving so great a gift given to us by God. Amen. As one family in faith, we profess the faith of our baptism, and so we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's presence here with us, let us lift to his love these areas of our need. For Pope Francis, Bishop Fobb, and all our priests, as they are generously served the church during this Lenten season, they may come to know more deeply the God who tirelessly serves them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who serve us in public office, may they look to God for direction and wisdom as they seek to serve the common good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us journeying through this Lenten season, 
that through prayer and penance, our charity may be strengthened and our spirits renewed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, homebound, or in the hospital, that they might know the tenderness and comfort of God's healing presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved dead, that they come to see their saviors face to face, and that those who grieve their loss might know God's nearness to them during this difficult time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those needs which we now mention in the silence of our heart, confident in God's mercy. Lord God, in your goodness, hear and answer us. For these and all things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that they may both faithfully revere them, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you you take take away away the sins sins of the world, have have mercy mercy on us. Lamb of God, you you take away the sins of the world, have have mercy mercy on us. Lamb of God, you you take take away the sins of the world, grant grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace. We may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of the Eucharist. Thank you for your faith, for your prayer, for your fidelity to your parish communities, both prayerfully and financially. Please be assured of my prayers for you in these days of Lent, even as I ask your prayers for me. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you now and always the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.